For me, the water cycle begins in the ocean, and the reason is because the ocean's huge, it covers 70% of the Earth's surface, and you may also know that the ocean is saline, or, or if you like, a little bit salty. So, the water cycle begins when evaporation occurs from the surface of the ocean, and when this evaporation occurs, only the water is removed from the ocean and it leaves behind the salt. So in regions where there's more evaporation than there is rainfall, what you find is that the surface of the ocean there becomes a little bit more saline. Once water does evaporate from the ocean, it stays in the atmosphere for about 11 days on average. Uh, after a while it might uh, condense uh, into clouds and then ultimately it'll form as precipitation. And when it forms precipitation, that means it's going to fall somewhere on the surface of the earth. It might fall on the land, it might fall back into the ocean, it might fall in a mountain where it becomes uh, incorporated into a glacier, it might be incorporated into the groundwater on the earth's surface, or it might land on the Antarctic or Greenland where it, it forms part of an ice sheet. No matter where the water falls, eventually it's going to end back up in the ocean and this can occur through uh, return flow through rivers or through glaciers uh, or it can be stored on the land for a significant amount of time before it gets back to the ocean. The key thing about this whole water cycle, it really requires the latent energy that is needed to turn the uh, water from uh, liquid water up to water vapour uh, which allows it to evaporate from the ocean and so with climate change we can expect there might be more uh, energy around and hence we may get more evaporation and an intensification of this whole water cycle.